Joining us on the Z line, John from Seven Dust, who's playing May second in Nashville at the Cannery Ballroom. If you want tickets for this, uh, you can go to Ticketfly.com. John, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you? We're doing well, man. Uh, we're we're stuck in this like rainy weather. I, I'm sure you're just going around the country. How's the weather? I think you're going to Texas here pretty soon. Yeah, we're on our way to uh, Austin right now, in between Abilene and Austin. Uh, it's been great so far. We started in Phoenix, and I uh, went to El Paso, and I mean. We've actually had beautiful weather. I mean, for me, you know, I'm, I'm living in Florida, and we're already up in the 80s. It's been uh, it's been nice, man. I've had my hoodie on the whole time, no rain. So, show's been great, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, getting getting back to Nashville, that's for sure. Yeah, I've noticed you're doing this VIP package now. Uh, I, I don't know if you've mm-hmm. always done this. Is this a new thing? Uh, we've done some version of it in one way, shape, form, or another. We usually kind of try to mix it up. Sometimes they're bus hang, sometimes they're you know, different things that we have going on during the day, depending on the tour. Um, but we've done some version of it probably for at least the past five or six years. Okay, so if, if they uh, buy this VIP package, I believe the one in Nashville is the, uh, the, the stage viewing area. So are they like side stage for this? I believe so, yeah, uh, yeah. That's pretty badass. Yeah, it's always cool when we have people up there. You know, a lot of uh, our, you know, People who used to work for us say, oh, you know, we hate when you have people up there on stage. It looks so unprofessional. I'm like, it's just us hanging and having a good time. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> That's right. Look, looks like fun to me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, we're uh, pumping this new song, Dirty, which we're huge fans of. Uh, I th- personally, I think it's one of your best songs, in my opinion, that I've heard from you guys in, in quite some time. I, I, I love it. For sure. I'm really excited about this uh, this new record you guys are putting out. Um, I've heard two different songs. I've heard, uh, I think it was unoriginal and dirty. Uh, did I get that right? The unoriginal or? Yes, that's it. That's okay. It. So I've heard two different, and that's kind of like a ballad and dirty, of course, is straight in your face. I mean, is this the tone for the new album? You know, it's, um, you know, people ask every time we make a record, you know, what kind of a record is it going to be? Is yeah. it the heaviest thing you've ever done and all that stuff. And I mean, you know, I, I don't think, like, you know, trying to do the heavy thing was, like, the goal. I mean, we're a heavy band for sure, but, you know, there's just, there's something about the way that Rajon approaches, you know, Seven Dust, um, you know, from his perspective, that just, it kind of gives us keys to a, a little bit of a different kingdom. You know, we don't get pigeonholed as just this, you know, heavy band with a guy who, you know, screams and can't sing or whatever. So we, we tend to try to take advantage of what, what he does well, you know, and a lot of those things are those, those songs that are going to be like not original, you know, stuff that may not be the heaviest thing in the world, but you know, we've, we've always been that band that's always wanted to experiment. You know, we've done the angel sons and we did an entire acoustic record. We did time travelers and bonfires. So that's, that's kind of one of those elements I think about our band that, uh, I think a lot of people enjoy, you know, and I, I love incorporating all of those elements in, into the mix, you know? So, there's plenty of heavy on this record, but there's plenty of melodic on this record too. Cool, cool. Uh, John, I, I had a question since we started talking about the, you know, the album and the records. Um, I was looking at the name, and I know the album. All I see is war is coming out May 11th, correct? That's it. Yep. May 11th. Okay. What is the uh, what is the meaning behind the name of of the album? All I see is war. Is there is there an underlying underlying meaning for that? I think it's it's just everything. You know, a lot of people thought it was more of a political thing, like, oh, here here they go. They're, they finally flip. They're Rage Against the Machine now. And that's, <laughs> that's totally not us at all. You know what I mean? With all due respect to Rage, I mean, I, I get it. That's that's kind of their, that's the whole idea. You know, right. that's their platform. But um, I think it's just, you know, at the time we were doing this, you know, you're just coming out of a vicious election cycle. Um, you know, you had half of the country you know, not listen to the other half of the country. You go on social media, and, I mean, people are just, you know, they're so apt to want to just, you know, fry somebody before they actually sit down and listen to someone else's, you know, opinion or, you know, state of mind. I mean, people, we all walk through life in a different way, in a different, you know, shape and form, and I think the way, you know, we have society and, you know, a lot of things set up, it affects people differently. So I think it's important for us just to listen to them. The underlying theme is the fact that it's just everyone wants to go straight to you know throwing hands. Right, <laughs> let's <yep. laughs> just you know, let's not have a discussion. Let's just get in a fight, you know. And I think we can get away from that. But right now, at the moment, it just it just feels that way. It's like you know, it would be nice if we could get back to the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> that makes <laughs> a lot of I mean? sense. Yeah, social media is, is just like it's just. 
It's just depressing. I look at my news feed on yeah. Facebook. I'm like, come on. You, you guys have been friends for 20 years, and you're unfriending each other over something stupid. Right. I can't you know believe- what I mean? I'm like, <laughs> really? Everybody's so at each other's that's throats. That's kind of what our take on it. Exactly. That's kind of what the take on it was for us. It wasn't really, you know, a straight-up political thing. It was just kind of like, wow, you know, it just it feels like the world's kind of lost their mind a little bit. You know, we've all just kind of come unhinged for one reason or another. You know, I don't know what order the buttons someone's figured out how to push, but, you know, it's just like, wow, the state of the world that we're in right now is, uh, it's, it's different. <laughs> well, it's sorry. very different for sure. Yeah. Well said. Hey, we were, uh, we, we, just, we were talking to, uh, Samantha Knight, our, uh, our afternoon host. I know you're friends with her. Um, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, she brought up the fact because uh, Moe's a huge wrestling fan. She brought up the fact that you need to go on tour with Chris Jericho and, and Fozzie. Right. Because we had no idea that you wrote, uh, you guys wrote the uh, his theme song, right? Was, is or, that the, or you did um, it? Yeah, we did. Yeah, it was The Walls of Jericho. That was like back in 2000, 2000 2001. God, that was a million years ago. He's got a cruise going on now. I'm like, you know, we've done this whole ship rock thing, and it's great, but... If there's a wrestling cruise, that would be kind of cool too. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm I, just saying we we might want to jam on that with them. <laughs> I'd be looking forward to that. I'd be looking for like I'd probably be trying to go get tickets to come and, and get on the cruise myself <laughs> right. somehow. Are you guys huge wrestling fans? You know, it's been I, I've never really been a huge fan. I mean, my wife kind of grew up watching it, and uh, you know, we've been uh, when you grow up in Atlanta, and you know, with me in Orlando, you're kind of like. It's it's there, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, the whole industry and the scene is kind of around you, you know, at all times. And uh, you know, we've we've been, you know, pretty close at times. Like I said, you know, doing the whole Jericho, you know, song and all that good stuff. But yeah, I mean, it's it's cool to be able to kind of you know tap into that world. When we first started, I mean, our infomercials that we were running that whole live and loud thing, they were before and after wrestling, mm-hmm. you know, wrestling, drag car racing, sporting events, stuff like that. So that that was kind of one of our. Uh, one of our target audiences because a lot of, you know, a lot of wrestling fans spill over in the world seven does, you know, which is actually kind of cool. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's so cool to see Fozzie. Like I remember when they first started, it was kind of like tongue in cheek joke. Like it's like, we're really not real, but we're real. And now they're real. <laughs> <laughs> now they're like a real band. They're writing their own songs, you know, that another band didn't steal or whatever that whole thing was. But I think it's awesome, man. I mean, we've, we've been friends with uh, Rich and Bud for, million years you know back in the step mojo days so it's cool to be able to see those guys you know still out there kicking and i mean it's legit man it's it's solid stuff i mean it wouldn't be doing so well on radio if it wasn't good yeah that's true that's yeah. very true yeah um i i you mentioned you you are in orlando now right you you're based in orlando or that's where you're living yeah mm-hmm. oh. yes sir so i see that you guys have a couple of dates coming up in florida uh jacksonville fort lauderdale destin like the day before nashville and so I, it was just making me think like what what are some of your favorite cities to to play like uh is it are there the cities in florida or is it going back home to atlanta um sort of i mean atlanta's always a bittersweet thing because it's like it, it's still a tough town for us, man. I mean, we don't we don't have a lot of radio support in Atlanta, so mm-hmm. it, you know we still feel like we're that band that's trying to prove ourselves twenty some odd years down the road. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you go to Orlando and we do typically like the House of Blues New Year's Eve, or we'll play on like an Earth Day birthday or something like that. And Orlando has always embraced us on the, on the, the radio side; they've always supported us. So it's kind of crazy, you know. It's like I grew up in Atlanta and. You know, you say seven dust, and people just kind of shake their head and go, oh, you know, what kind of music is that? And you say it in Orlando, <laughs> and everyone's like, oh, yeah, 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 seven dust, holy crap, you know. So it's, uh, it, it, I love playing, you know, Florida for sure. But, I mean, there's there's so many places around the United States that are cool to play. I mean, we love playing Nashville just because we never really get a chance. I mean, we do it, but we don't do it. We don't do it like we do Orlando. You know, we, we mm-hmm. could do Orlando at least once or twice a year, every year without missing a year, you know. But, uh but there's so many cool places to play. Mass is, you know, Mass in Wisconsin has always been a, a really, really, uh, you know, good spot for us to play. Really? Um, hmm. Yeah. The upper Northeast, all around, like, you know, Hampton Beach Casino, Boston, you know, Connecticut, that neck of the woods is super, super over the top, too. And the West Coast has been great lately. Um, we just had, we have to get back there a little bit more often. But, but uh, I mean, there's, you know, when we're starting the tour, we're looking at the, you know, we're looking at the list going, I can't wait to get to all these places because we've been off for, you know, the better part of a year, a year and a half now. So. Wow. Wow. That's, that's a long time on the road, man. Right. 
Jeez, I don't know how you do that. <laughs> well, no, no, no. We've we've been off for that. Oh, long. you've been off. That's oh, I thought you've been on. Yeah, the road. no, 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 no. We we we've, we've been sitting. We've been. I mean, we did. We did. I think eight anniversary shows last year, which yeah. was like less than two weeks worth of touring. You know, and then the whole rest of the year was basically sitting at home making music and then making a record. So. Uh. We're like we're we're in the bus. I'm literally standing in the hallway of the bus for a long time. <laughs> you mentioned you mentioned you know Atlanta. There's not really a rock scene, but do you feel like you're the most underappreciated rock band that you know that is on the radio right now? I mean, because that's the way I've, I I always have said that you guys are the most underrated band uh, in the 21st century. Well, I mean. I, I, Hopefully we can fix that. You know, hopefully we can change people's perspective. I mean, yeah. in some ways it's kind of cool to be that man, and in other ways it's kind of frustrating because it's mm-hmm. like, I mean, you know, why? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I mean, I, I think this time it's actually going to be uh, a little bit different only because, you know, for the past 10 years we've been trying to slug it out on our own. And when I mean on our own, I mean literally on our own. You know, Seven Brothers literally is like the five beats in the band. It's not like we have some office full of people that are running the show. Everything was run from out here. So, you know, I mean, you hire a radio team and you hire, you know, PR and stuff like that as needed, but you don't really have like a built in team that's, you know, helping you drive the car. You know, we have a record label now, and it's weird <laughs> because I look around, I'm like, wait a minute, there's actually people who are helping us try to do this? This is amazing. <laughs> you know, you get so institutionalized to doing it, you know, one way. And it was cool to do it that way, but, um, you know, I think this time around, it's just, it was important for us to, to surround ourselves with a team that, that could help, you know, I mean, who can bring something to the party that's going to help us, you know, make this thing bigger and, and give it, give it a little bit of life and, uh, you know, help us, you know, help us just focus more on the show and the actual tour itself. Well, yeah. And you brought up a great point. You guys did sign a new deal with, uh, or you're with a new record label rise records. Yeah. So. Rise records. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. And that's a great record label. Uh, so uh, we're excited, man. I, yeah. I love the new single dirty. It's fantastic. All I see is war is really everywhere. Uh, May 11th. That's when you can get the new record. Uh, May 2nd though, more importantly, they're going to be in Nashville cannery ballroom. You can get all the details at seven dust.com or go to ticket fly and search out um, the mercy or not the cannery ballroom. It, they're part of the same thing. It's always <laughs> confusing. It's cannery mercy, a high watt. It's all the same thing pretty much in Nashville, but uh, you get tickets there, and you guys are playing with Memphis Mayfire, which is a really good band, too. Mm-hmm. Yep, Memphis Mayfire, Fire from the Gods, and then uh, Madam Mayhem is open. Awesome. Fantastic. Well, John, we appreciate the time that you've uh, allotted for us, man, and best of luck to the new record. Best of luck at, in Nashville and the rest of the tour. Have fun at those festivals, too. Thanks so much, man. Really appreciate it, guys.